it's minus 17 out. I'm going fishing. I'm going to do this. Let's see what happens. It's going to be freaking cold. Sarah bought me some electric socks. <laughs> I got them on, I got them turned on. Hopefully they stay turned on because I'm all done at my waders now and I ain't taking these suckers off. My other waiter boots were frozen solid to the shop floor. So I got a spare pair. I got on. I wonder if I'll be the only one there today. Let's see. Here we go. So I'll let the camera go while I take the first couple casts anyway, but I want to save the battery for later for get some voices heard, possibly videotape in some other spots. Had one hit, lost one rig, and uh, after I lost my rig, I tied the camera on. And I took about, I don't know, I think 12 minutes of cast drifting with the camera down there. So I can't wait to go back home and see what's on that. So after I've done that with the camera, I'm gonna let the pool cool off a little bit while I do that. See if I can find some readers. And uh, get a little share out here while we let these fish cool off a bit. They don't really seem to get spooked from the camera. I actually had a steelhead go up and smash the camera with his tail last year. But it was definitely something else, Kevin, that thing going drifting down and splashing back on top. So I'll let it cool off a little bit. And then get back at her after I get some voices heard. 2021 is coming to a close. You know what? One thing that I do, I am happy about with this channel, happy about the time I invested. Uh, one of the many things is, like I think in the very, very beginning, when I, after I'd watched them, I've been watching, like I said before, watching the handful of the so-called big names. Myself, I don't even know how anybody gets referred to as a big name when it comes to... Uh, these unknown beings and our reality and who we really are. There's no big names, it's just us. And uh, I finally had enough and I decided that's it, it's time. It's time, it was about all of you. And what one thing that I have really enjoyed, the success, what I call, what I consider success of this YouTube channel, what we are doing as a group, is the fact that we basically Prove to the world that it's all about the people, that the people run this joint, right? We did it on a small scale and we took one particular oddball topic and we proved it. We took the attention away from the attention whores, we took the attention away from the controlling freaks who want to control what you see, read, hear, or share. We blatantly stepped in, said that's enough, and we all took it away from them just like that, <laughs> right? Isn't that freaking great? That's probably one of my biggest, my most favorite aspects of what we have done here. We took it away from the control freaks. We took it away from the narrative holders. We showed the so-called big names that they are no bigger or better than every single one of you out there. And that's what we did very easily. And I'd like for all you to take note of that for when it comes to other topics in this lifetime. That's how easy it is. It's when the people have had enough, the people stand up together, there's nothing you can do about it. When all the people come together 
It doesn't matter how bad you want that control, how bad you want your face to be the face in the camera, how badly you want the topic controlled by you, it just doesn't matter anymore because the people run the joint. Right? <laughs> Isn't that freaking great? I love it. I absolutely love it. All of you kicked the narrative controllers to the curb and took over with good, hardworking, honest people and nothing but pure motives. Bravo. It's like, that's when you stand there, that's when the slow clap, right? What is it? How does it go again? When that goes down, then the slow clap. <laughs> right? And I'm quite certain everybody is standing there doing the slow applaud to the entire group at the same time, and you all get it. You get what I'm talking about. All right, moving along. I'm not babbling and wasting time. We got people to be heard from. Right? We got people to be heard from. Word for a word people to be heard from. Hope you guys can hear this over top of the roar of the river. All right, no mark, this is red. Also, a big pat on the back to all you people who decided after a lifetime of secrecy to come out and share with all the people and help create what this place is. A very, very powerful place, all right? Knowledge-filled, powerful place. Bravo. All right, Sabe, 1969. Thanks, Steve, for all the letters you have read concerning the Sabbath. They are real, and too many of us have come into contact with them just to have our experiences ignored or ridiculed. It helps to hear other people's stories. I get it that you're a no-nonsense type of man, and I admire you for that. I'm a great-grandmother, almost 61 years old, yet I still have flashbacks of times I came into contact with these beings. My family rented a low, country-style farmhouse within sight of Mountain Island Lake outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. It was a beautiful place built in the 1880s with granite boulders in the yard and nearby forests. I wonder why my parents didn't move away sooner because we had numerous contacts with these frightening creatures. But now I am resolved that humans deal with fear in various ways that include denial and curiosity. I, keep, I kept having flashbacks of one event that happened when I was about eight years old. Most parents try to assure their children that they really aren't monsters looking in their windows at night. Not mine. I'd always wonder why they seemed to believe me. Now I know the rest of the story. Not only did the Sabe peer into my window, but I fell off the top bunk because it had gotten into the house. There's no doubt that back then a window could have been left open, holding it, a window fan, or maybe it got in through the door. I, I do remember my mother told me to never open the downstairs front door ever. Well, that one particular night, after being alarmed by the face of my window, I finally drifted off to sleep, only to find myself being lifted up under my arms by that hairy monster. My first instinct was to struggle to get away. I couldn't even scream yet because I was so startled, I hadn't time to plan my escape. Clearly, because I wiggled right past the guardrail onto the floor. Boom! Ouch! I sought refuge with my little sister on the bottom bunk, and she got mad that I'd pushed her over. But there's a monster trying to get me. Shh. I could see, still I could still see it and was worried it would get us both. So then we're both yelling for mama and daddy. I'm yelling that there's a monster and she's saying, Marjean woke me up and pushed me over. So before my father and mother even made it to our room, I hear this thing pounding its feet down the hall out of our room. It made a sound similar to a woman's scream, but not exactly. It was similar to a whoop or a baby with colic. My parents were sympathetic, and now that I've remembered the part about how it got into the house, I sure understand why. Honestly, I can't say for sure if it was this time or another time I saw a big one and a juvenile with it. They jumped over the wrought iron rail in the front porch where the window boxes were that held the geraniums. That porch was on the second floor with a staircase going from the top floor down to the yard. I know I was young and asked them, why didn't you use the steps? But then I figured they didn't know how. The thick ivy in the chimney was torn off on one side that was outside our bedroom. The first floor was partially underground and the ceilings weren't as high as on the second floor. My father had a guest later on that estimated the creature's height to be between eight or nine feet tall. The man used the word Sasquatch, 
When I first heard the word, I thought I must have been sassy, an S monster came to squash me. But I was told these creatures have been sighted in the great north woods, and they were here in North Carolina too. Thank you for your time and your family. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Wow. Marjean, thank you for that email. I think your name sounds familiar. I think you emailed us before, didn't you? Now, that's something else. Imagine being a child and seeing a monster in the house and your parents actually are sympathetic to you and your experience of what happened inside the house. How un unnerving is that? So I'm guessing if something got in the house and grabbed you underneath the armpits, it was probably something quite small compared to what they could be, right? Because if you're a child and if there's an adult in the house, I'm quite sure one hand would have picked you up by the waist. And that is freaking alarming, right? Let's see if I get one more out, then I'm going to go back to casting a line in behind me. All right. Comes another one. Mark this is red. Your question, why share now? Steve, I was watching the read from the gal who spent time in Alaska with the family of Sabbath. And you asked us to tell you why now. I can only say what you always say to us, you already know. You made a place where we come and voice something that didn't exist before. Safe isn't exactly the right word. There's risk any time we open our mouths to speak about things that the assholes don't want us to talk about. No medium is really safe when Big Brother listens to everything. If you give us a place where we don't get looked at with disdain or skepticism or pity, sooner or later we will take the shot. In my case, I waited till last summer before I took you up on the offer. Mostly because over the years I tried to talk about it several times and got nothing but negatives back at me. Even from my high school sweetheart, who knew about it from, who knew about it from others we both knew. We have been together almost 49 years. After all those years, five kids, six grandkids, and all kinds of ups and downs, I have never gotten a tiny bit of acceptance or a belief from her. None. I was a cop for three decades. My word was good enough to take away a man's freedom, or even his life. But somehow, on this one thing, my word is worthless. I can't tell you how that feels inside, but it really sucks. And eats at your self-respect over the years. Cop personalities tend to be black and white, no shades of gray. We have to be that because otherwise you just can't make these snap decisions, fast judgments, to do one thing or the other. At least, not, and be correct. For the person closest to you in the world to snort at you in disbelief, basically calling you a liar, it's damn hard to take. I'm 66 and I was taught that my word is my bond. I believe that. I taught my kids that. I have a reputation for that kind of ethics in my whole life. In 30 years, I've never lost one court case, not one, not his credibility. Yet on one thing, I'm a liar? Bullshit. So when you offer the chance to speak without the crap ton of disbelief getting dumped in your head, it means a lot. Why now? Why not? Opportunity doesn't knock twice. The assholes are going to do their damnness to kill as many of us as they can. So anybody with two brain cells knows it. So we take the chance and talk about it one more time. I've watched you read my little bit and it actually felt like a weight lifted off my shoulders. No shit. I can't explain it any better than that. I feel like I can breathe again. I was 18 when I joined the club. I'm 66 now. Cops rarely live to be old. We tend to blow a gasket and die. If not now, when? Sorry if this went long, but you asked for an explanation, and that's not easily done with few words. People troll you and talk about how much money you must be making doing this. I could care less. Whatever you get, you did the work. You're entitled to it. It pays for hay, goat chow, everything that you want to spend money. You earned it on. That's your right, not for somebody else to sit in judgment on. As far as we're concerned, it's not even an issue. What you do has value and we appreciate it very much. It's something few others offer to us. Dave and Scott are the other two, mostly. The three of you give some meaning to what the rest of us feel. Thanks very much for that brother, much appreciated Andy. Andy, this place is nothing without you, all right? Nothing. It's nothing without you and nothing without all the other people just like you. And thank you for being a good stand-up police officer. It's something we all need, right?
And it is, it's, I know the frustration that you're carrying with your wife. Um, I have many friends that have the exact same reaction, but it took me quite a while to understand fully that it wasn't the disbelief, it was the fact that it scares the living shit out of them bad enough that they will block it at all costs, they will not engage in the topic conversation at all costs, they don't want it to be real, they don't want it in their life, they don't want to acknowledge it, and they will stay firm on that stance at all costs, right? So I don't, hopefully you will, you'll be a little more sympathetic to possibly that aspect of it than feeling that you are being referred to as a liar. I'm quite certain your wife doesn't believe you're a liar. Um, if I had to bet, I, if I had to make a bet and I bet the farm that the topic scares the shit out of her and she's just fine without that topic in her life. And who knows, who knows? Maybe she had a terrifying face-to-face -face encounter with one way back in the day. You never know. It's a possibility, right? And maybe possibly you could send her this, this video and she can have a listen to it. Maybe it'll help her understand a little more and, and uh, be a little more understanding towards you and how, how, it, how the topic frustrates you when it possibly comes up between yourself and her and how you're feeling like a liar. Because that does kind of suck, right? We, I think we're probably both on the same page when it comes to people calling us a liar. I'm not talking about your wife, <laughs> but I mean somebody else. You want to get in their face and say, oh yeah? I dare you to say that one more time, right? I get it. But anyway, I'm so glad I lifted a weight off your shoulders. Um, it's, it's lifted a weight off of tens of thousands of people. 100% without a doubt. And um, as far as the people going after me, <laughs> it's not possible, right? I mean, the odd time, I'll admit it, the odd time I, I have had the odd email that I've read and it caught me at the right moment, I went straight for the jugular and got it across that if I could, I would dive into my freaking, dive into the internet and come out on their end and trash the shit out of them. And I'll admit it. The odd time I do have that reaction, I've done it a handful of times now to people who have emailed me and blown a gasket and I've ripped their throat out verbally. But other than that, I mean, it's pretty harmless, right? It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the naysayers. It doesn't matter how vicious and how vile they get. It doesn't matter, right? What matters is, is they can't do anything to us, to you, to me, to anybody, right? This is a very, very powerful place this place that we've all created together. It's very, very powerful. It's pretty cool. And I hope that this example of what we've done here, of taking the narrative away from the camera hose, right, the camera whores, the so-called big names who are actually quite the opposite now, right? They're done. Uh, you know what? On that note, if we were kind of curious the other day as to who or where there might even be a popular channel when it comes to this topic. And we found some that possibly were or used to be. But just so you guys know, I mean, there's a few places you can, you can log into, check out, that will show you numbers of YouTube channels hits. They're not dead, they're fairly accurate, accurate enough. And just so you guys know, this channel is receiving a substantial higher amount of, of views than any other channel no matter who the previous, who the other channel owners is. Some are TV celebrities that have been in front of the camera in front of millions of people forever, and this channel is still getting over two million views than their channel are a month. How's that for being a little crazy, for not being marketed, for not being TV celebrities in the past, for not having access to discovery or history or whatever channels on TV? It's an example of what happens when all of the people have had enough and they want to kick the BS to the side, take the camera whores and kick them to the side, take the narrative holders and strip what they've somewhat managed to control until now, and kicked it all to the side and took over. It's pretty freaking cool. It's been on my mind a lot lately once I really realized the magnitude of what's gone on here. It's substantial, it's huge, and it creates hope with not only this topic, but with numerous other topics in the world. We just got to figure out how to expand and get the people to tear it away from other narrative holders and other topics. Anyway, I'm babbling. I got to get fishing. I'll talk to you guys again before I go home. Or maybe I'll hook a fish and you can watch me fight it.
Here we go. So about maybe 10 years ago, I came up this river in a jet boat with an old friend. We caught, I think we caught 22 steelhead in two days. I just hiked down the river to a hole I've never fished by myself before ever or been by since. Check this out. How delicious does that look? No footprints in the snow, but mine. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the hook in there a few times. See how I make out, maybe change it up once or twice. And then I will throw the camera down and see what's really going on. I love it. Juicy place. I know I gotta tear my jacket. <laughs> it still works though. Believe me, I don't give a shit what it looks like. It's funny, Sarah's always like, you're not wearing that jacket on video. Whatever, it's a torn back. It still works. Still works. So one day maybe I'll buy another one. Anyways, I'm losing light. I didn't catch a fish. Um I think I fished this river twice last year to hook a fish and, and um, some people I know who guide on the river were claiming they're in big trouble because the steelhead were gone last year. I got another buddy who's caught a couple of steelhead this year on this river, it's a big river. I watched three other guys hike down, they had all the top of the line gear and they're on their side from me. They fished the snot out of it and they didn't hook one. But I think I managed to take about 22 video casts, which to be honest, it makes me absolutely excited to get home and see what was down there. I love it. So we'll see what happens once I get home. What's really down there. And I think I might, the next time I go, I'm possibly going to go, well, I'll go hit this one more time. I'm going to go fly fish in the upper half of the river. And then uh, I think I'll take a couple few days out and I'm going to go remote alone again. Like where I went last year, my buddy and I videotaped those steelhead and caught a few. I'll probably go hit that one. But in the meantime... Get some voices heard before I run out right of light and go home. And uh, gotta go home. I'm on my way home. Ooh, I'm on my way home anyway. Come on. I get. We'll see. That's cool. You know, one thing I was. I, I know I got a reply from the guys. There's a group full of people who are claiming to be in contact with these beings quite often, speaking to them. Maybe they're lying, maybe they're not. And let's face it, you guys, if somebody does email in to lie just to hear themselves, well, the only it's only gonna affect them. It doesn't affect anyone here, right? They come and they go. But there's some people on here that have some, some crazy, not crazy, but some substantial claims. And I have no reason not to believe them. But what I would like to say, I think I haven't come across that share yet, the reply from the guys who've been in contact with these beings. But my challenge to you would be, if you would, I want to think about it, is seeing how you are very skilled, very, very driven, and obviously don't give up and have the right approach, and you're making contact with these beings. I think you even said you're getting names of them. What if you were to take all of that focus and all of that hard work and challenge yourself to find out who the hell we are and find out the truth about us? I think that might play a very large part of us understanding a whole lot of shit, right? Because there's some of you people out there who are working very hard at figuring out these beings and making contact with them, that, me that would tend to make me believe that you could probably do real good at finding out our truth. And maybe I could throw out a personal challenge to all you to find that out. Find out our absolute honest truth. Obviously, we're getting lied to. Obviously, we've been misled. Obviously, our history has been demolished, possibly. Think about that one for a little bit. Chew on it. See what you come up with, all right?
We've got to find out who we are, possibly, before we get to find out who anybody else is. You never know. Although we are moving right along, aren't we? All right, what do we got here? Feather Falls, California experience. Dear Steve, I just listened to a story from the Maydu, pronounced Maidu, man from Oroville, California. I want to support him in his experience because I lived in, four, in, feathers, in Feather Falls on what was once the land of the, oh, hold on, Maidu, used for grinding their acorn for meal. I was also told by a local Maidu man that the chief lived on this plot of land but can't confirm that. I know they ground their meal there because we had numerous grinding rocks all over the two and a half acres we own. Though, how can one own land, for that matter, a tree or a rock? We also bought additional 10 acres down the mountain from us to keep the pot grower who squatted there from coming back and disrupting the peace. All this area, Feather Falls, Berry Creek, and Brush Creek towns, and the whole of the Feather River drainage was lost to the Bear Fire later, renamed the North Complex Fire, September 8, 2020. Missing a couple of periods of commas in that one. We had bought the two and a half acres back in 2011 because two of our three sons lived in Butte County, but there was only an old cabin that we had to take down to build our home on the same spot. There was a lot of brush and dead trees to clean up, and we would work weekends on the place and camp out in the old cabin with no running water or electricity. Once we took a whole week to work on it and brought our horses with us to ride if we had the time. One afternoon we were burning some brush in a small pile and I went down to feed the horses and I noticed all three had their eyes and ears pointing down the hill towards a small gully. I always listen to my animals and stop to listen, but I couldn't hear or see anything due to the very thick underbrush. In fact, the woods were abnormally silent. We had bear in the area, so I figured they smelled or heard one. I went back up to the burn pile where my husband was tending the fire, and just after I sat down, an extremely loud scream came from the aforementioned gully. It went on for minutes, undulating in tone and pitch, and ended in a ver with a very human-sounding, though hoarse, laugh. We looked at each other, and because it was so unbelievably unearthly a sound, my husband looked at me with wide eyes and said, Did you hear that? I said, Yes. Then it happened again. I decided to respond with our rusty gate hinges by swinging the gate to send back something spooky. Then it happened one more time, always starting with that extremely loud scream and ending with the human laugh. I'm not a large woman, but I was raised in a very violent home as a baby, so I don't scare easily. But what I did next probably falls under the foolish heading. We had grabbed a 30-30 after the first scream, so I told my husband that I was going to run down the hill toward the sound, and if I yelled, shoot, to shoot over my head. I ran down laterally to where I thought the sound was coming from, then turned towards it and stopped within what I estimated was 50 yards of where the sound came from. It was completely silent. No sounds from birds, bugs, or wind. I stood there for quite a while, or at least what seemed a long time, listening and nothing. So I decided to sing Amazing Grace and the Love of God out to the wilderness. After I finished singing, I thanked the beings whoever they were, for allowing us to live there and wish them peace. We had no idea that we could, we had no idea what could have made the sounds, and when we told our oldest son, he said, it sounds like Bigfoot. He wasn't surprised or kidding. And I said, really? He said that he thought so. We didn't make, we didn't make much of it at the time because our lives were very busy at the time. Lately, though, I came across your videos and was shocked at the similarity of the descriptions of the screams to what we heard that day. By the way, we were within a few miles of Millsap Bar and the Maidu man told about in his story. We never heard the screams again and lived there peacefully till the fire forced us out and we now live in North Idaho, four miles from Canada. Couldn't take the California BS anymore. If you want to share this experience and my name, that is fine with me. I hope your Christmas season brings you many blessings. Susan Lumen. Susan, absolutely appreciate you going out of your way to type that out and share it with everybody through me. I think the, uh, you know, normally we always get the, the loud scream mention. And not that often is a blatant human type laugh at the end of them. That must have been something else to hear that. I would be very curious as I look around.
Well, not that curious to hear the laugh, but maybe, uh, maybe somebody could have recorded it and sent it to me that way. I would be down with hearing. Holy cow! You just scared the crap out of me. I was standing there for about four or five minutes. Oh, we're at. We you listen yeah. to the story. A little bit, yeah. Cool. Where's your rod? Well, I left it in the truck. Yeah. Uh, Did you uh, see any fish down there with these cameras? Well, I got. Stop this. It's fine. I read all these email stories that get sent in me. <laughs> How funny is that? Guy and his little dog were down the trail. He said he's there for like five minutes. Scared the shit out of me. I guess my sixth sense isn't picking up on anything right now, is it? Or maybe your sixth sense just alarms us to uh, somewhat of a threat or a stalking nature. But it's funny, I, just, I talked to the guy for about 15 minutes, and uh, he's kind of a, a slow talker, and he's like, Are you a hunting guide? <laughs> like, yeah, what well, was? He goes, yeah, black tailed deer hunting, I've seen you online. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, that's me. Kind of random, kind of funny. He didn't want to talk about the Sasquatch topic, though, which is fine. No, I'm really losing light, so I gotta see if I get one more out. All right, what do we got? All right, I'll read one more, and then I'm going to get going, you guys. And we'll pick this up tomorrow again. Countless encounters. Thank you for your work. I was living summers of 2013 and 15 in the most remote community in the lower 48 when I had an encounter in the high Cascades east of Glacier Peak, Washington State. I am a licensed applied scientist and was intrigued by what I witnessed. While at that community, I was able to learn more about them. I reached out and met as many people as I could that had experiences and listened respectfully to their stories. I have camped with one, two, three, four, five. You just name, name dropped five people that I will not promote just because. I've camped with these five people, plus many more. I learned from them and developed my own. Okay, hold on a minute. Oh, please do not share this online. All right, all right. I passed that one up. I guess that was a one meant for me. All right, what's this one? Mark, this is red. Memory. You shared a story of a young man sleeping in a tent, found himself outside, away from the tent, when he was woke up the next morning. No idea how he ended up there. This jarred a memory that happened to me many years ago. I'm 70 now, and this happened when I was about 17. Me and two cousins would set catfish lines late at night, and then we'd have a few beers. Later, we'd get on the back of the pickup truck, open bed, we'd be in sleeping bags, and I was the smallest, so I'd be in the middle. I remember waking up yelling. I was about halfway out of the pickup. Something was pulling me out. My two cousins grabbed me and pulled me back into the pickup. Strange part, we just went back to sleep. The next morning, we woke up, and I asked them if I was dreaming about being pulled from the pickup. They said they heard me yelling and just grabbed me and pulled me back. Felt like someone was pulling me out. We checked around us and no signs of anything. Now this is in South Carolina. We have small black bear, nothing huge. I don't know, maybe just my imagination. But that young man's story just made me think about that night. I've sent you an encounter story before. Don't know if you have read it. But feel free to use my name, Jack Smith, near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Thank you, sir, for what you do for the people. It's nice to share this with people who understand the effects of these encounters. Very long-lasting. Jack, appreciate it. I'm going uh, to end on your email so it's fresh in my mind to search your name in my inbox and see if we have come across your email yet or not. And if we haven't, I'm going to read it right away, all right? Um, they, you said your friends pulled you back. So I guess that means you were being pulled out. Otherwise, you would have said they just woke up beside you and told you to shut up. It sounds like some of these beings just like to mess with people, right? I mean, if they, if one of these beings wanted your ass out of that truck, your ass is gone. Right? So. Anyway, it's a flash behind me. It's getting dark. I gotta get out of here. Sarah's gonna think I fell in the river and drowned. <laughs> And I'm not quite in service yet, but I will be once I get up the top out of this valley. 
But I'll be back later on and we're gonna get more people heard. All right, I'll talk to you all shortly.